Then Jesus told them a parable about their need to pray always and to not lose heart. He said, In a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, Grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, Though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, Listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry out to him day and night? Will he delay long in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? Let us pray. But wait just a minute. Why? What is it in praying that we hope is accomplished? I would hazard to assume that most of us believe that prayer makes some kind of difference, has some kind of effect. I also assume that most of us here don't think of God as some kind of genie in a lamp who grants our prayers like wishes, or maybe more accurately, like some kind of sorcerer who hears out our wishes and decides whether or not to magically make them come true. If you did believe God worked like this, then you'd actually have it made, because the reasons for praying would actually be pretty obvious. But I think that for most of us, it's a little more tricky. You see, many of us don't believe that we can change God's mind. Some of us believe in an all-knowing God who knows best what we need or deserve. Some of us believe in a benevolent God who's going to do what's best regardless of our prayers. And some maybe don't even believe that God so much listens to our prayers. A lot of people, myself included, have spent a lot of time wondering about why we pray. We've lucked out, though, because it turns out Jesus had a few thoughts to offer about this, and today's gospel is one of them. This is just one of those parables, though, that can just make you scratch your head and think, I know you're trying to teach us important stuff here, but sometimes it's just so hard to figure out. I mean, Jesus holds up this image of a judge, an unjust judge. He says himself, this judge doesn't care one bit about God or anyone else. He's just in it for himself. And the only reason he even agrees to help this poor widow is for his own good, because he just wants her to stop nagging him. Then Jesus holds up this judge and says, listen to what the unjust judge says. And seemingly says, won't God do the same? So if I'm one of his disciples sitting there, I'm tempted to say, so Jesus, what you're saying is that if we pester God long enough with our prayers, then he'll grant us what we want so that he can shut us up, <laughs> so that he can get some peace of mind from our, from our nagging prayers. Interesting. But hold on, because what helps this parable out a lot is the very first sentence explains what the main point is. Jesus told his disciples, this parable is to show them the need to pray always and not lose heart. So whatever we take away from this confusing parable, it's supposed to teach us something about the need to pray always and not lose heart, but this phrase had a particular meaning to Jesus' disciples. When they heard this phrase, need to pray always and not lose heart, they understood that Jesus meant two things by it. First, that praying was absolutely necessary. Second, that praying is the opposite of losing heart. He was telling them, if you don't pray, you will lose heart. If you pray always, you will not lose heart. Back some years ago, there was a time in my life as a young man when I lost my faith. I had hit some rough times financially and was struggling to balance college and work and debt. I couldn't get a better job because I didn't have a college degree, and I couldn't finish college because I had to work to survive. 
The more I went to college, the more debt I accrued. The more debt I accrued, the more I had to work instead of going to school. I was caught in this downward spiral that I couldn't get myself out of. And it was really very easy to let my faith practices vanish. I stopped praying, and I lost heart. Let's look at the story of the widow again. Jesus' point isn't that she prayed enough to wear the judge down and get her way. It's that her faith made it impossible for her to lose heart and give up. She knew what she needed, justice. And she knew right where to get it, that judge. She went to the one person who had the power to grant her what she needed. And maybe he never would have granted her the justice she sought. But if she stopped trying, then he definitely would not have granted it. Stopping praying is losing heart, and losing heart is letting go that justice would ever come. And that's what I had done. I had lost heart and stopped trying until I finally hit rock bottom and started praying again. When I started praying again, I, like the widow, was choosing not to give up. What I prayed for isn't even the point, and whether or not my prayers were answered isn't really the point. I was praying, which meant I believed that all was not beyond hope. I eventually climbed out of that downward spiral because I stopped living as if the downward spiral was all that there was. I've talked to a lot of people who think that having faith means fully trusting that God knows what's best and will do it. And that's not a bad way of thinking. But that definition of faith can also make it really easy to believe that our actions don't matter at all, including prayer. Jesus' parable of the widow here shows us otherwise. If the widow only trusted in the judge and did nothing to push for justice herself, almost surely the judge would never have granted it. Much to the contrary of lacking trust, her faith was such that she could not behave as if it didn't matter. She knew what she needed. She had the faith that it was possible to get it. And she lived her life in a way that kept alive the possibility of justice. So I offer you this proposal. Go out and trust in God to know what's best. Trust in God to do it. But do your own part as well. Pray always and do not lose heart so that you are living as if what you pray for can really come to pass. And so, given what Jesus taught us, let us indeed pray. Amen.